My name is Rowan Douglas and I head the Capital Science and Policy Practice at Willis Towns Watson and chair the Operating Committee of the Insurance Development Forum. Well, insurers and reinsurers that protect them against uh, the catastrophes have a variety of roles to protect society against uh, extreme weather and climate risks. The first and obvious one is obviously to provide uh, financial resources uh, when disasters strike. But in fact, the role of the industry goes far beyond that. It's become the real focus by using advanced risk modeling to actually help understand and evaluate these risks now and into the future. And critically, that knowledge can be shared with consumers, both domestic and commercial, through the price mechanism, but also through other mechanisms too. And through the provision of insurance, often consumers have to uh, undertake certain uh, requirements to have the coverage. Usually that's around driving safety or improving things like building standards. So the insurance sector has a variety of ways of helping society uh, understand the requirements for a satisfactory level of resilience. Governments have a, a central role. In fact, insurance and reinsurance is always a public-private partnership even in, in markets where insurance is primarily delivered in the private sector. The reason is because the demand for insurance is shaped for how governments decide that society should manage risk. It's usually through government legislation and policy that consumers, both commercial as well as domestic, are required to buy uh, insurance. Or it's legislation, for example, that means that mortgages need to be protected against uh, flood and other natural disasters uh, through the insurance mechanism. So it's governments which have a key role in driving the uh, consumption of insurance, but also things like the security of insurers to make sure that they are going to be solvent when disasters strike. And for that, you need excellent risk modelling, uh, which can be then applied by regulators, credit rating agencies, as well as the insurance sector itself. And it's governments who provide the framework to enable that, that to happen. Well, businesses and infrastructure operators and owners have, have a key role. And the, the fundamental uh, requirement is for them to understand and evaluate uh, flood and climate risks that they face now from extreme events and how those uh, risks are likely to develop in the future and make sure these assets are properly uh, designed and built to withstand the likely risks and shocks that they'll face during their life. But also to make sure that the investor community values and recognises that resilience and that's actually a key uh, requirement now and, and um, there's a coalition for climate resilient investment that's been established that was launched at the UN uh, Action Summit last September to actually create the methods, metrics and standards using risk modelling to make sure that resilience is properly and proportionately valued by investors so that at long last we can let the invisible hand of economics drive resilience, whereas at the moment these important risk factors are actually not being properly taken account of uh, by investors and by credit rating agencies and the result is that unfortunately around the world many infrastructure assets are being developed which are not actually uh, as resilient as they'll need to be now and certainly into the future. We're entering a very exciting time for the use of data and analytics in the resilience of cities around the world. And it's all tied up with a key driver around risk disclosure in the financial sector. Over the next five or, five or so years, they'll become uh, a requirement for both public as well as private sector entities to disclose their risk to physical climate events. That disclosure will be driven through the use of metrics and models, and that information will be consumed by all sorts of stakeholders, including investors uh, and regulatory authorities. 
And as soon as risk becomes identified, it cannot be ignored. It has to be managed. And it's going to be the modelled world that is actually the mechanism through which this uh, route to resilience is mediated and delivered. Thank you.